Hi everyone, I'm the rum, one half of wine and rum. We're an expat couple from Barbados and Austria living here in Dublin, Ireland. We make weekly videos about coming to Ireland and how you, as an expat, can adjust to life here and not just live, but thrive. Now, today's video is a video that I wanted to make for a little while. If you looked at any of our comments, especially on those about renting, you'll see exactly what I mean. There are lots of people who aren't as thrilled about the situation of living in Dublin as our videos may make it sound. And we figured it's time not just to talk about the good or positive things about living in Ireland and Dublin, but some of the negatives as well. So that's the topic for today's video. So one of the first problems, you might have heard about it before, the housing crisis. We're going to make a video very soon where we actually explain it from our understanding tells us Christ, the housing crisis in detail. But for now, over the past few years, several years actually, the price of renting in Dublin has been rising. And when we came here three years ago, it was already not that affordable. And now it's just keeping getting worse and worse every year. For example, when we first came, we had to share a room for about a thousand euros. I know, that's crazy, because the main thing is if you go to a city like Vienna, a thousand euros, they'll get you the entire apartment. Right now, well as I'm recording this video, if you want an apartment here that you don't need to share, that's going to cost you 1200 if you're lucky, but more in the region of 1300 1400 and up per month to rent an apartment here in Dublin. What this also means is that, you know when we were thinking, our lovely millennial young teenage selves that, you know, 27, we're gonna have our own place, everything's gonna be fine and dandy. Yeah, you come to Dublin, you just might find yourself as a 27 year old living in a shared room. Not exactly the thing you wanted, but that's kind of the situation. And because of the sometimes salaries for jobs not being high enough, there are lots of people that have had to share rooms. The If you look at several websites, you'll see a lot of places where people aren't asking, hey, what apartment can I rent? But rather, hi, do you have any rooms that you can rent? And a lot of people aren't able to afford this at this level. And unfortunately, for those that aren't able to afford it, that's where the homeless crisis comes in. There are lots of people that can't really afford on their budget or what, you know, unfortunate circumstance may have happened to actually be able to live comfortably. So it's a fortunate thing that yes, you'll see some homeless folks on the street or those that are living like living homeless, you know, they're just going from paycheck to paycheck. So that's the unfortunate one of the big realities about Dublin at this present time. You might be wondering, well, you know, this could be just a rough couple of years. It could be over soon. That's the thing. We don't really know when it's gonna be over. Where I work, I'm walking by a lot of a lot of offices being built. Sure, I figured there's some residential along with it, but at the current market rate of rentals, who's really going to be able to afford those, you know? So, challenge continues. Well, that's just one. If you've got some more to go, on to number two. So we actually met one of our subscribers who just moved from the US to Ireland. And one of the first things we told him, you know, jokingly but also pretty serious, leads into point number two. In Ireland, I'm not really afraid of crime or violence like gangs and so on like that. I'm pretty calm about that. What I would be afraid of, that no one tells you about? Kids. <laughs> I know, it sounds ridiculous. More like, you know, Roman groups of what I will call, you know, teenagers. Yeah, I think that's a fitting word. Yeah, oh, you think I'm still joking? Just a few weeks ago was Halloween. And usually we're there, you're supposed to be looking at the fireworks if you're in a nation that, you know, celebrates Halloween like that. What we had to be doing is dodging, you know, fireworks being thrown into sh to the streets. Yeah, by what I'm going to call rebel teens from now on. Yeah, and it's just crazy. Like, also a couple of weeks ago, we're just walking home. And this dude, like, yeah, tall, uh, trust me, like, proper kid that used to step out of the way if you were at school. You know how those school hierarchies went. And this kid went and like jumped 
and knock the hat off some random bastard by not as tall as I am, but I was still like, dude! And the guy could just look like, oh well, this that's my hat flying there on the ground. Uh, yeah, this is the sort of things. Now, I know, this happens everywhere. There are, you know, ruffian-like teens everywhere. But the thing is that they don't really tell you about this, especially when some of these teens do enough that it makes the news. Uh, a couple months ago, apparently Deliveroo drivers, sorry, not drivers, riders, were the target. Yeah, I'll link it in the description. Crazy article about they actually stole this guy's bike or just knocked him off the bike and actually started beating him. There were some videos circulating, so if you're in Dublin, you know, that in certain parts of the country, it's not everywhere, of course, you know. But that would be a certain look out for. It's a big group of teenagers, you know, don't be naive. They may cause trouble, they may not, never know, but it never hurts to just be on the lookout. Now, connected with the first point is the cost of living. So when you move to any country, usually your biggest expenses are your food, accommodation, and transport. Right, that's the last one. <laughs> so, accommodation is already being tough. So, what about everything else? Yeah, I'm sorry, it doesn't stop there. You know, food, depending on where you shop, can be affordable enough, depending on which country you come from. Especially me from Barbados, you know, the food is comparably, you know, cheaper. You know, it's less places, less far destinations that you need to import the food from. But also, there's a transport, and that will take you to your monthly costs. But the main thing is the accommodation. So, the main thing about Dublin is that I would say for anybody looking to come here, unless your salary can actually cover accommodation, your food and transportation, and then have enough left over for your lifestyle, then it's going to be really tough and almost miserable, honestly, to be able to live here. With so much going towards those big three expenses, then there's hardly anything left. Sure, you might wake up, go to work, eat, go back to sleep, you're just stuck in that like never-ending cycle. Sure, you can go to the pub on weekends, but after a few rows, your money's gone. That's the big thing, you know. It's For me, it started to feel like a kind of a divide in society almost like that you have like some of the workers who are working in tech that get the salaries that are big enough in order to have a sizable amount left back that's not me I saved some money but yeah I'm not making Facebook or salaries um, yeah so unless it's like that it feels like a real struggle for you know if you're not really in the tech industry and if the city's just growing in that direction who's actually gonna be able to live here yeah, I, I see that concern a lot in the, some of the comments and, you know, I gotta say I agree with them. Now this one is a bit lighter, but it still pisses me off at the end of the day. Transport. Now, I don't know if no one expected Dublin to actually grow into this large city. It's still small, but large kind of in how it was seemingly built for to the population size it can support. During my shower, everywhere is blocked. First, let me mention some of the transport that you have here in this city. So you have the Lewis, which is a the tram. There are two of those, ones that run like north to south, south to north, vice versa, and east to west. Just those two lines. And then you have the Dart, which is the train system that kind of runs along the coast. Not much inwards for that part of the city. Yeah, I'll throw up a map. You'll see, get a better idea that way. And everything else is buses or walking if you're on two feet. So during rush hour, you can imagine how all these buses of transportation are just full to the brim. And what annoys me even more is that the way people behave when you're traversing these streets in the morning. Between the cyclists and the cars, number one in Ireland, hardly anyone pays attention to the um, traffic lights. Jaywalk everywhere. But even when they are on green or stop, you know, bicyclists, cyclists still run through. See, so you can't just cross the road. You've got people pushing and so on like that. Uh, cars honking everywhere. It's, it, it, it's like the Wild West almost on your way to work. You know, sometimes I'm kind of lucky because I get to 
walk along a path where you know the cycling path is you know different from where you're walking so it's not that much chaos but the wine yeah she doesn't get it as good main problem there is that the city keeps growing as I mentioned earlier I'm seeing more of office blocks but not the apartments or the increase in transportation actually you know also the city there isn't a subway a metro an underground whatever you call it apparently They've been trying to get one going for the past 20 years. They're still talking about the project. It may actually be coming on board, but hey, I'll be surprised to see it within the next 10 years. We can hope, but no one really seems to be doing something to address this while we're pouring more and more people into the city. Hopefully, that was a bit informative, unless of a rant. Really didn't want to turn it into a rant, but when there's some of the challenges that might annoy you day to day or pop up, you get a little bit emotional about it. Any comments, discussions, or anything else, keep it civil, everybody. <laughs> Down in the comments, anything that I've missed, you know, that, you know, are you completely disagree with, or you think that things will be better, or some stuff that really bugs you about Dublin, yeah, do share it. This is a discussion. We, anyone that's coming here, we're having, you can have a good life here, but also, you have to be open-minded. I know that there are going to be some challenges and we should let people know what are the challenges along with the benefits as well. Of course, we make videos weekly, as I mentioned before. Remember to subscribe. We're starting this new thing where we're making two videos per week. This longer form one, but also shorter, like ones from three to five minutes that just give you some answers to some of the most frequently asked questions we get about Dublin. So, I hope this was useful to you. Please give a like if so, and share it with anybody who you feel would benefit from this information. I'm The Rum, that's all for today. I'll see you next week. Bis später!